what do we have right here? It is another amplifier. This time around, not a chip amplifier. Nope, seriously getting a bit bored with those. This is something quite exciting to me because I never did anything like it before. This is a little Class A amplifier and uh, links to a detailed description and the circuit and all that is going to be down in the video description, so you may want to take a look at that. Uh, the circuit is uh, this one right here. And, um, well, it does work. At first I was having some really strange problems, but uh, eh, the turn out, stupid me, I reversed the collector and emitter on that little PNP transistor. Really not uh, used to working with those. <laughs> and, uh, well, would you believe it, now it actually works quite well. I uh, haven't had a speaker hooked up to it yet, just a little dummy load, but uh, a very clean sine wave that we're getting on the scope does speak a, a pretty clear language, and that is that uh, the thing is working, at least uh, with uh, something as simple as a single sine wave. Anyway, um, what is this all about? Well, we got pair of uh, 2N3055 uh, NPN transistors on this heatsink right here. This is the driver circuit, so basically I have it split right here. All this is just, you know, just point-to-point -point wiring with this heatsink and all that messy wiring in between, and then all this sits on the driver circuit board. Got, uh, as you can see, you got two transistors on there. The one on the right with a heat sink is that one right there. Doesn't really seem to be getting any warm, so that heat sink might be unnecessary. Uh, we got two potentiometers on this. Um, this little one uh, sets the DC offset and it is a rather primitive setup, but I was in fact able to get the DC offset down to uh, you know, one, two, three, maybe four uh, millivolts, so I guess that's good enough. Um, this one right here sets the uh, collector current through the uh, output transistors. And uh, that's uh, this resistor right here. Uh, they put that into the circuit to monitor the collector current. Well, what I've done is uh, I just uh, directly wired in a little amp meter. I got it set for one amp, which seems to be about the right kind of thing for this uh, setup. Uh, less current, uh, the p output power just goes way down and more current, this thing starts overheating. So, yeah. Of course, it's a Class A amplifier, so things are getting quite hot. And I'm not going to claim that I can still touch it. It's, it's pretty darn hot, this heat sink. Um, anyway, uh, so that's, that's all relatively good. I got, well, around about a kilohertz set on this thing. That's what's coming out right there. Um, the problem that I'm uh, having right now is a uh, really annoying one. If I detach the uh, frequency generator so that we are having an open input, look at that. We should be getting straight line, no input, no nothing. What do we get? That. The uh, amplifier starts oscillating, which is very annoying. So you can see. Um, that is uh, something around 38 kilohertz, and uh, not really sure what to think about that, so if you got some helpful ideas, I'd really, really appreciate your feedback. Is, uh, um, I mean, you may think that uh, all this massy wiring had anything to do with it, 
but it doesn't. In fact, I can trace this uh, oscillation back all the way to somewhere around here. Somewhere around there. If I, uh, if I go ahead and with the uh, second channel of the, of the oscilloscope, if I touch the, uh, the base of the PNP transistor, and you can see it almost goes away entirely. And uh, if I short the, uh, the input with a 1 kilo ohm resistor, uh, it's it's all fine. It's all perfectly fine. So it must be something around, you know, something in here. Now, if I turn this thing around, and start touching things, um, things are really going crazy. And I, uh, you know, if I touch, you know, things in this area right here, uh, the that that oscillation becomes so loud that uh, it's it's really insane you can't actually hear it coming out of those poor transistors so that's definitely no good uh, I did use strip board as you can see so that might be part of the problem what I'm gonna do tomorrow unless you suggest something better I'm gonna go ahead and um, break the connections of that strip board and you know just kind of try to insulate the um, the input stage from what's going on at the output stage just you know maybe try to break every single trace except the ones that are necessary somewhere around half of the circuit board you know maybe one trace is just having some sort of an influence on another uh, I don't know but, uh, well, that's where we are right now. So, there we have it. A nice little Class A amplifier. Except, it's having those uh, stupid problems with oscillation with an open input. And, uh, before I go any further, I'd really like to get that fixed. So, once again, if you have any, any kind of helpful advice, leave a comment. So... Thank you for watching and see you again soon.